That then brings us to our minutes. If there is no objection, the minutes of the June 11th regular business and public meeting and June 18th special call meeting will stand approved. Any objection? Okay. Uh, that will bring us then to our invited guest. We do have uh, County Commissioner Mike Boudreau here tonight, District 3 Commissioner. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. Um, and we also have with us Ken Williamson from the ARC Atlanta Regional Commission to do a presentation on the uh, Transportation Investment Act. Mr. Williamson. Thank you, Mayor Council. I appreciate y'all having us here this evening. Um, my name is Kane Williamson. I'm a transportation planner at the Atlanta Regional Commission. Here to talk to you about the pending um, election on July 31 for a transportation sales tax vote. I need to clarify for you all that I'm here just providing you information. I cannot and would not advocate one way or the other for your vote other than for you to cast it on the 31st. So out of the way, let me tell you a little bit more about this um, this uh, vote that we're headed for in a few short weeks. I'm sure many of you all know this site. Um, it's something most folks in the Atlanta region see every day. Um, just as a, a few facts here, 38% of all trips taken in the Atlanta metro area for any reason go across county boundary lines. 38% of all trips in the metro region cross county boundary lines. 64% of all work trips cross county boundary lines. That's an enormous, enormous number of trips that are going across county boundaries <coughs> every day. Um, so obviously you saw the traffic. We have a bit of a problem um, with the traffic that we've got going on in the region. Um, what got us to this point, I guess, in our history? You can see here that um, this is just an illustration of how uh, the funding for the transportation system in the country and the state works. It, most of the funding spent on transportation in the nation, uh, the state, result, results from a gas tax um, that you pay every time you fill your tank up. Um, there's an excise tax and a, per, and, a, and a sales tax that's associated with that. So as our vehicles become more and more fuel efficient, we buy less and less gas, which means we spend less and less money, which means we have less and less money to spend on our transportation system. Um, in addition to that, we haven't raised the gas tax in the state of Georgia since 1971. I was born in 1973. So in my lifetime, there has not been an increase in the gas tax. Uh, and I'm almost 40 years old. I, I tell people when I was giving this presentation in January that I just shaved my beard and there was gray in it. You can't see it now, but there was gray in my beard and we haven't raised the gas tax in my lifetime. Um, so um, you combine that with the fact that we continue to see more and more of these little guys um, come into the world every day uh, and into our region every day, as well as an influx of population um, uh, every day. I see the mayor saying it's a cute baby. I think the baby's kind of creepy, but um, I didn't make this presentation. Somebody else did. Um, we, so by 2040, we expect that um, the Atlanta region will be home to more than 5 million people. Um, that's about 3 million more people than, um, than we have in the region today. That's a, another Fulton County um, by the time we get to 2040. So imagine adding that many folks to the picture you just saw of the roadway that was congested earlier, combined with the amount of money that we spend on transportation um, in the state and the nation. And you can see why the Atlanta region is the ninth, ninth worst for congestion in the country. Um, we're the 48th worst for spending in the country. So it's a huge disconnect here um, between how bad the transportation system is and how much money we're spending on it. Um, so that obviously results in some pretty severe congestion. Again, with the congestion theme here, seven of the worst bottlenecks in the U.S. are found in the Atlanta region. Um, you can see them listed up here. You would probably see I-285 and Georgia 400 on here as well, but for the fact that Georgia 400 is not an interstate. It's just a freeway. It's a highway. Um, so it's, can't, it wouldn't be listed in this, in, this, uh, in this list. All of this combined to convince the legislature that we needed to do something about this. So they gave us the opportunity um, last year, um, the legislature created, passed the Transportation Investment Act, which created the opportunity for the passage of um, transportation sales tax in 12 regions across the state of Georgia. And so a little bit about that, um, that opportunity that we have before us here. 
there, so this, the, the carbs are stayed up into 12 regions along county boundary lines. So in the, electri in the metropolitan Atlanta region, there are 10 counties in our region. Um, and so we're going to a vote for a one penny sales tax over a 10 year period. Um, that it would raise about $8.5 billion. 85% um, of that money would be spent on regional projects. 15% would be spent on local projects. But 100% of it comes back to this region. None of it goes to the rest of the state. It all comes back to the 10 counties um, that are voting on the tax on July 31st here in metropolitan Atlanta. <coughs> Um, so I should, I should say here that the tax will end either at 10 years or when $8.5 billion is raised. Whichever comes first is when the tax will end. Um, and so we can talk a little bit more about, um, about what the legislature did. They, the legislature programmed a fair amount of transparency and accountability in the process, both to um, identify the set of projects that would go to the voters, as well as tracking the progress on the construction of those projects if the vote should be successful. So the law cr required the creation of a round table of local election officials and, um, and legislators from, from the 10 counties in Metro Atlanta to sit together to figure out what the list of projects would be. So that $8.5 billion, 85% of it, um, th that round table decided how that money would be spent. So they put together a list of projects and we'll see more about that in a minute. Um, and once the vote is successful, there is the creation of a citizens review panel that the law requires that will oversee the progress toward the implementation of the list of projects. Um, in the absence of additional revenue that would result from a positive vote on this sales tax, we expect that we would spend in this, um, in this region about $13.2 billion over the next 10 years. Um, that 70% that of those funds would be spent on maintaining the existing network. No new construction, no expansion, all about maintaining the network. So we're filling potholes, we're repairing bridges, we're making sure the transit systems, um, buses are safe, the, the trains are safe. Um, nothing, nothing really to expand the system. You add to that this referendum um, project, you can see an additional $8.5 billion here. That's about a 64% increase over what we'd be expecting to spend normally. So with that, you begin to see expansion over a 10-year time frame as opposed to a 20 or 30-year time frame as you might expect otherwise. So the $8.5 billion, what does it buy us? Um, $7.2 billion, 85% of that, um, is, results in about 157 regional projects. Um, we'll talk about those and then we'll talk about the remaining um, $1.3 billion here. So of those 157 pro or 57 projects, you can expect about 57 miles of new rail and bus rapid transit in the region, about 14 major interchange repairs, 165 miles of new and or expanded roadways, and then multiple miles of sidewalks, multi-use trails, bike lanes, um, those sorts of things. There's even um, some aviation projects you'll see on the screen up there. Um, so all of that is in the regional pot. And then 15% of the $8.5 billion, $1.3 billion here, is spent by local governments. So that money comes directly back to local governments to spend on projects that they identify for themselves. So the city of Snellville would identify a list of projects based on the amount of money that it can expect to receive on an annual basis and then implement those projects as the money flows to the city. Um, the law also required that the roundtable identify the projected um, public benefit of spending these dollars. So this is, um, this is the expected benefit that we've analyzed here. We expect that about 200,000 jobs will be supported between now and 2040 as a result of the expenditure of these dollars. Um, it would be about a $34 billion impact on the regional GDP. And we expect that about an $18 billion rise in personal income you all are aware, I'm sure, as, as everyone is, that we've been losing jobs in the region for quite some time. As we've begun adding them back, we're adding back lower income jobs rather than higher income jobs. So that's why you can expect, we expect that this, that these $18 billion um, rise in personal income would come partially as a result of adding higher end jobs to the, back to the economy in the, in the Atlanta region. Um, additionally, we expect that we'll save about $9 billion in, um, congestion costs. That comes from wasted fuel and time as people spend sitting in traffic. Um, this would, uh, we expect to see about a 24% average decrease in future travel delays as a, res as a result of 
implementing this set of projects um, on the on the TSPLOS list, and that's how you see this nine billion dollars in savings. We expect about one point two million dollar or two million fewer pounds of tailpipe pollution um, being put into the atmosphere on a daily basis. That's a, the equivalent of taking about seventy two thousand cars off the road every day. It's no small no small figure for a region that has had air quality issues for some time now. Um, all of this results in improved health and quality of life for our most vulnerable populations, our older adults and our young people, the folks who are most susceptible to air quality issues. Um, and part of this uh, increase or decrease in congestion and, uh, air and improved air quality is a result of uh, improvements and efficiencies in the way the, the system operates. You didn't, you didn't leave your house um, and get directly on an interstate. You left your house and you turned on um, to a small road, then you intersected a larger road that had an intersection, uh, a, a traffic control device, a light at it. So um, about 45 projects on the list are meant to improve the way these lights uh, conduct traffic across the region. So um, that can result anywhere from a 15% to a 40% increase in efficiency at any given intersection. So that's where a lot of the time savings um, and congestion reduction comes from. So. Um, these are a couple of interesting slides here. I, I apologize that they are not Snellville specific, but the, it's just a demonstration of what we might expect from some of the projects you see on the list. This is an analysis of how many more um, folks could be able to reach, for instance, the Cumberland Activity Center by car within 45 minutes. So um, without the TIA, without the sales tax, you see the blue blob, that's without. If we implement the TIA, you can then see that the, the area expands. So you essentially have a larger labor pool from which the employers in these activity centers are able to pull on a daily basis. So in this instance, you've got about 117,000 more additional um, employees that uh, these employers could, could pull from within a 45 minute car, shop, car trip. Same thing is true with transit. For instance, here, this is the Emory Activity Center, the Emory CDC area. <coughs> Excuse me. You could expect that within 45 minutes, um, we add about 223,000 new employer employees that these employers, this large employment center, could draw by train, essentially by transit, um, within a 45-minute trip. It's no small feat. That's quite a number, actually. Um, so, and this is all obviously about the competitiveness of the metropolitan region. So the question is, how do we maintain our, comp our competitiveness with other um, regions like Charlotte, Phoenix, Denver, Minneapolis, all of whom have undertaken a similar uh, vote within, the, within recent memory and have all passed that vote. So as they invest in their regions, we need to be considering whether or not we're going to invest in ours if we expect to remain competitive with them drawing the young creative workforce, drawing employers that would put those young creative minds to work. Um, so the question that is before you all um, on the 31st is, is whether or not this is something we need to do. It would, it would be about $100 per household per year is what the tax would actually cost you. Um, and so that's, that's really where we are. Please vote on the 31st. And I'm glad to answer any questions that mayor and council or audience may have. Council so inclined. Are there any questions from council? Thank you, Mr. Williamson. Um, and I believe that there is a the Gwinnett County Chamber of Commerce is sponsoring a form tomorrow at Summit Chase Country Club at seven o'clock. If anyone would like more information, you can also attend tomorrow um, at seven o'clock. And Mr. Williamson, if you'll hang out just for a minute, maybe outside, if anyone has any individual questions, they could feel free to ask you. Is that okay? Thank you for coming tonight. With that, we will move to our committee department reports.